Hey guys, welcome back. Another trig video for you here today. The topic of this one, sign law. Not quite like Sokotoa, but not that different either. Let's check it out. Alright, so sign law. What is it and how is it different from Sokotoa? Well, first of all, the sign law is used in non-right angle triangles. Now, technically it could work in right triangles, but there's a couple of cases that you could get stuck with where sign law wouldn't work for you. So your safest bet, use Sokotoa for the right angle triangles and sign law for the non-right triangles. Remember right triangles, they had that little box in the corner usually to identify them as being right triangles, while well, non-right triangles don't have one of those 90 degree angles. That's how you know to use sign law. Now, just like Sokotoa, it's used to find missing side lengths and angles in these non-right triangles. And just like in Sokotoa, if you're finding an angle instead of a side length, your last step is always the sin negative one. So sine law is a little different because all we're using is that sine or sin button on the calculator. We're ignoring cos and tan when we're using this formula. Now, 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 labeling this triangle is really important. First of all, my angles get capital letters, A, B, and C. They can go in any order. So once I've labeled the angles, capital A, capital B, and capital C, the side lengths get labeled accordingly. What that means is that whatever angle I start with, I go across the triangle and give that side length I've just landed on the same letter, but in lowercase. So across from the angle with capital A is going to be side length A in lowercase across from angle B with the capital letter is going to be side length B in lowercase and the same thing goes across from angle C is a lowercase c. Now that the triangle is properly labeled we got to figure out how this formula works. Now this is only one formula but it's got three fractions in it. So what I've got to do is fill in the information that I know into each of these fractions and that information is given in the question. Now in the example you're going to see we only ever use two of these three fractions at any one time. Impossible to work with three fractions at once. Impossible to use impossible impossible to use three fractions at the same time. So once we narrow it down to two fractions we're going to cross multiply to find our answer. Important reminder again if we're finding an angle we've got to do the inverse sign as our last step. Now one really important thing to know about the sine law is that if you're solving for an obtuse angle, and remember obtuse means bigger than 90 degrees, you've got to take whatever answer your calculator gives you for that angle and subtract it from 180. The reason for this, although you don't really need to know it, is that the sine of two supplementary angles is exactly the same. So for example, if you took your calculator, you could try it now, you could try it now, and found the sin of 30 degrees and the sin of 150 degrees, it would give you the exact same answer. Now your calculator will always give you the acute angle, so if you know you're looking for an obtuse angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, you've got to subtract your answer from 180. Don't get caught in that trick. And if you're not really clear on that, the second example that I'm going to do is going to show you exactly what I mean. So check out the two examples to see how it works. All right, here's a question where I've got a missing side length in a non-right angle triangle. I know this is a non-right triangle because I don't see that square in any of the angles. And if I wasn't sure, I could just take 180, subtract 70, subtract 58, and figure out what that missing angle is. That's 52 degrees. Just confirming for me that this angle is not 90 either. Now that I know it's a non-right triangle and I'm looking for a missing side length, I know that I can use the sine law. Now sine law has three parts, but I can only use two of them at any given time. So I'm going to write out the formula. Then I'm going to have to fill in some numbers to figure out which two fractions I'm going to use. So I have to remember, am I dealing with acute angles only, or do I have an obtuse angle in here somewhere? Acute angles are smaller than 90. Obtuse angles are bigger than 90. Now watch in the next example what we do with those obtuse angles. There's a really important trick that you need to know if you're trying to solve for an obtuse angle using sine law. So stay tuned for that. And remember, a right angle would look like that. 
So the first thing I would do would be to label this triangle. I'm going to put capital letters at each of the angles, A, B, and C, and it doesn't matter which one goes where. So I'll put angle A here, angle B here, and angle C here. And now I have to label my side lengths. Side lengths get the same letter as the angles on the sides that are across the triangle from the angle with that letter. Side lengths also get called A, B, and C, but in lowercase. And these ones you've got to be careful. Lowercase a has to go across the triangle from capital letter A at the angle. Lowercase b goes across from angle B. And lowercase c goes across from angle C. And now that I've labeled it, I'm going to fill in my formula with the values that I know. Lowercase a goes with 7.7 .7 as a side length. And capital A is 70. Don't forget the sin in front of it. Lowercase b is unknown. Capital B is 58. Lowercase c is the unknown value that I'm looking for here. And angle c with the capital letter is 52 degrees. Now that I've got all three fractions set up, I've got to figure out which two of these three am I going to work with. The one that's not important to me is the fraction with the b's in it. Lowercase b and capital B is not important to me because that's not the side I'm looking for. So I'm going to x out the fraction with the b's in it and focus on the two fractions that are left because the side I wanted was the lowercase c here. Notice that's where they put the x in the question. So I could rewrite this just so it's a little neater. 7.7 .7 over sin 70 equals little c over sin 52. When I'm cross multiplying, I block out the value that I'm looking for and I see the three values that remain. What I do with those is I multiply the two values that are diagonal to each other. In this case, that's the 7.7 .7 and the sin 52. Notice how they're diagonal to each other. And I divide by that third value. So in my calculator, I'm going to put 7.7 .7 times now I need the sin of 52. In my calculator, it wants the angle first, the 52 first, then I have to press the sin button and then equals to complete the multiplication. So that's 52 sin, 0 0.788 is the sine of angle 52. I press equals, that gives me 6.06. .06. What I'm looking for is that times that divided by the sin of 70. So now I'm gonna hit divided by 70 sin and press equals again for my final answer. And here I get 6.46. .6. Now the types of calculators that I'm using, which a lot of you do have, are pretty tough to work with. Let's see one that's a little bit easier. That cross multiplication of 7.7 .7 times, now in this calculator I can put it in just the way I read it, sin 52, and now I can just hit divided by sin 70. And you'll see I get the exact same answer of 6.46 centimeters. And that would be the length of the side labeled with lowercase c because that's the side the question was asking about. Now let's see another example with an obtuse angle. Here in this second example, we've got a question that says find the measure of obtuse angle A. And once I know I'm working with an obtuse angle, what does that tell me? It means I have to remember that my answer for the angle is going to be 180 minus the angle on the calculator at the end. This is because the sine of any two angles that are supplementary to each other is the same. So your calculator will automatically give you the acute version of the answer. You've got to subtract that from 180 to get the obtuse supplement. Having said that, all you need to remember is this reminder right here, and you'll be fine. So let's get started. The question says find the measure of obtuse angle A. This is the one I'm looking for right here. Now these angles are already labeled for me, A, B, and C, so I'm going to go ahead and label the side lengths. This would be lowercase a, this would be lowercase b, and this would be lowercase c. Notice how a is across from a, b is across from b, and c is across from c. I know I'm not working with a right triangle, so I'm going to write out the sine law. And now that I've got all that written out, I can fill in what I know from the question. So instead of little a, I'm going to put 40 over the sin of angle A, which is actually what I'm looking for in this question. That's equal to little b, which is 28, over the sin of angle B, 20. And the c's, this is the fraction I'm not going to use, 
because I don't know anything about them. So I'm going to cross them out and focus on the two fractions that I can use. If I block that out, I've got three things left. I multiply the two that are diagonal to each other and divide by the other one. So in this case, I'm going to do 40 times the sine of 20 degrees divided by 28. Here's how it looks on my calculator. 40 times 20, and then I have to press the sin button. That needs an equals after that because what the 0.342 represents is the sin of the angle 20. I don't want that. I want that times 40. So I press equals and I get 13.68. I can leave that right on the screen and just hit divided by 28 equals 0 0.4886002048. Clearly not what I'm looking for. So remember, that's the sin of angle A. The last step when you're finding an angle is to do the shift or second function sin. That's the sin minus one. And when I hit that, 29.25 is what I get. Now don't forget, I was looking for an obtuse angle. And 29.25 is acute, meaning it's lower than 90. So what I've got to do for obtuse is 180 minus 29.25 to get the answer. So if I go to my calculator, 180 minus 29.25 leaves me 150.75 degrees. And that makes a lot more sense as an obtuse angle. So that's it for sine law, and now you know what to do if you've got to find a missing side length or a missing angle in a non-right triangle. Don't forget those couple of important reminders. Even though there are three fractions in that one formula, we only ever use two of them at any given time. So whenever you do sine law, figure out which one you don't need or which one you can't use yet, and work with the other two fractions. The other really important reminder here is anytime you're finding an obtuse angle, you've got to take whatever answer your calculator gives you and subtract it from 180 to get the proper answer. So now that you know how the sine law works, in the description of this video, you'll find a quiz to check your understanding. And our next video is how to find the area of a triangle using something called Hero's Formula. So check that one out when you're ready.